Public service almost always means government work. It can also mean working for a nonprofit organization, but that discussion is very complicated. One thing that government and nonprofit jobs share in common is that they are organizations that typically serve the public in some way, but do not make a profit in doing so. Here we will focus on finding government work. It is important to know that the U.S. federal government is one of the largest employers in the world. There are at least two million government employees and over a million members of the military. Walmart has, has over two million employees, but that is worldwide. China has a larger number of employees with a large military, but the U.S. still employs a lot more people considering it has less than half of the population of China. The point is that larger employers provide more jobs, and they are often the kind of jobs that social science students want because they involve helping people through social service agencies and creating programs which help society function. State governments provide many of the same services as the federal government, but the size of these governments depends on the size of the state. Missouri will have significantly fewer state jobs than California, for instance. City and county governments also hire people, but there are fewer opportunities and less turnover, people leaving positions, from which to find work. The goal of this lecture is to provide an overview of the kinds of work people do in the government that may be of some interest to you. We will also review careers in social research. These types of jobs occur in both government and private sectors. It is common to hear that government jobs do not pay as well as those in the private industry. The truth is, that depends on the job. An accountant will make less in the government than she would make in most private firms, but it is important to remember that you are likely going to work in a position which may have no counterparts in the private sector, since these jobs do not make a profit. If you are working in an agency involved in helping find services for the indigent, there are no real parallels in the private world, unless you include nonprofit organizations, which also do not provide high salaries and are often funded by government grants. In other cases, the government pays more for similar work than in the private or nonprofit industries. A government paid teacher, for instance, typically makes more than a private school teacher. Once you are in a government system, the federal, state, or local, it is easier to move around the organization, applying for different positions relative to people applying from the outside of the organization. It may be worth starting at a lower level position with the idea that you can apply for higher level positions later, using your experience and tenure in the system towards the new position. Your chances of getting the government job go up if you are already a government employee. In the federal government, there are often advantages for being a veteran, which is also a federal government job. Many jobs in the government do not require specific skills but rely heavily on experience and time in service. Here is a list of agencies in the executive branch of the U.S. government. There are many other divisions with jobs, but this provides a glimpse into the varieties of work done by the federal government. You will see there are a lot of jobs associated with defense, such as the De Department of Defense and Department of Homeland Security. Keep in mind that these, like other agencies, hire a lot of civilians in many different positions. Most jobs in the defense field, for instance, have no direct connection to defense. Soldiers do the actual fighting, but there are a lot of people involved in the development and administration of defense programs that have nothing to do with fighting wars. For instance, there are many civilian positions associated with accounting, project management, and other programs such as running family programs on military bases. Given the number of jobs available in the federal government, you should examine these and other government agencies to learn more about what they do and how you may be able to contribute to their goals. There is one last issue that is important to remember regarding government jobs. All governments in the U.S. are expected to be transparent with regard to how much money people make. As of 2019, the lowest paid federal worker makes $18,785. This is GS1 Step 1. While that may not seem like a lot, 
you should know that these positions typically include benefits, which you won't get at Walmart for the same pay, and they require little education. Step one is for someone with no government service, reflecting time at rank. College level positions often start at GS4 or GS5, or even higher, and you can fairly quickly estimate how much more money you can make in that same position over time in the form of steps. Finally, for each government job listed, there is usually a pay range. For instance, the position of paralegal specialist is currently hiring at the GS11 or GS12 rank. Thus, you can be hired between $53,062 and $63,600, or even higher, depending on the location and the step you enter in. That is, you can get more money in places with a higher cost of living and may be hired at, at a higher step if you have time service. State governments have similar pay schedules, but probably pay less than federal jobs. That said, you have more control over where you work with local governments. That is, if you want to work for the federal government, you will likely have to move to a place where they need you in the United States. This can also mean international work. Over time, however, you can apply for a job closer to where you want to work, assuming there are federal positions available in that area. You have more control over your career once you get enough service time. The same principles apply to state, county, and city levels. Choosing the level at which you are willing to work will make a huge difference in how you approach your search. The federal government has the most jobs, and simply going to the search site usajobs.gov will open up to you thousands of jobs all over the country. While you can narrow it down to certain states, there are likely dozens of jobs you are not qualified for. The best thing you can do is figure out the job titles that are most relevant to your background and interests. If you want to be successful, you will need to be patient and try different things. If you simply put sociology, you will f likely find things that are not terribly useful. But if you find only one or two positions you are interested in, make a note of those titles for future searches. If you are interested in issues related to youth, for instance, you will find a lot of positions, but only write down those jobs that you would even consider. Over time, you'll have a list of specific positions to look for. This method is important because jobs are posted and eliminated all the time. You'll need to go back and look for them on a regular basis, at least monthly, but weekly would be even better. There are fewer state and local positions available at any one time. It may be easier to simply scan all of those positions on a regular basis. Of course, if you go to a state employment website for states like New York or California, you may have to use a similar job searching strategy as with federal positions. If you really want a position that exists in government, especially the federal government, you'll need to consider whether you are willing to move. You can certainly look for local positions, but there are going to be fewer opportunities at any one location. If you are willing to move, you can get the position you want and build up your experience in government service, which will make you more competitive in the location you want to be. As a result, you will always have to be watching for open positions. Even if you find a job at the location you want to live, you may be interested in a higher level position, which almost always means moving. The career search never ends. One final point. The government processes jobs slowly. You need to give yourself at least six months to find a government job, especially jobs with the federal government. You should start looking for positions now and apply as soon as you are qualified to do so. Many people study the social sciences to answer the question, why do people do what they do? Social sciences do try to answer the question in academia, but there are also positions that you can get with an undergraduate or master's degree too. A social scientist is like any other scientist, but instead of a lab, she typically utilizes social surveys or focus groups. Among other techniques, instead of mixing chemicals in a lab or dissecting animals. The market for people with research skills is pretty good, and the American Sociological Association has shown that people who do social science work out of college 
feel better about their work and make more money compared to people in other fields. That said, while you do have some training for social science research, you will need additional training in statistics and or methods and some experience to be competitive in this job market. While there may not be research jobs in the community where your school is located, you could work with faculty on research projects and do summer internships where you come from, assuming it is a larger town. There are two sets of places to find work as a social scientist, the government, especially the federal government, and private industry. The single largest employer of social scientists in the U.S., maybe the world, is the U.S. Census Bureau. They hire for any number of jobs, ranging from statisticians and program managers to people collecting data door to door. The Government Accounting Office does a lot of program evaluation work to assess its programs. This almost always means collecting and analyzing survey data. There are a number of nonprofit agencies or think tanks that do social research with the goal of writing reports on social issues. While most of this work is conducted by an outside firm, which could also be a source of employment, scholars and think tanks must be able to analyze and synthesize information from research projects. Rand Corporation is an interesting example of a large social science nonprofit think tank that hires people at almost every level of education to conduct research, analyze data, and write reports. Occasionally, social science majors are able to do market research. While there is a whole business major associated with this work, the skills are very similar. Instead of assessing a program, you are trying to find out whether a product will sell. The logic is similar, but the outcomes are very different. In some cases, these business jobs pay more, but keep in mind that if you look for this type of job, you will be competing with business majors. Private firms like Gallup Incorporated pay people to do polling and receive money from both government agencies and private organizations. Newspapers regularly pay companies like Gallup to distribute surveys and analyze data on public opinion related to important topics like gun control and abortion. They also monitor political races. You will not get a job as a social scientist with a single course in statistics and one in research methods. To be competitive, you'll need to take at least one to two more statistics courses and another research methods course. The federal government defines the requirements for a survey statistician as a a degree that included 15 semester hours in statistics or in mathematics and statistics, provided at least six semester hours were in statistics, and nine additional semester hours in one or more of the following physical or biological sciences, medicine, education, or engineering, or in social sciences including demography, history, economics, social welfare, geography, international relations, social or cultural anthropology, health sociology, political science, public administration, psychology, etc. Credit towards meeting statistical course requirements should be given for courses in which 50% of the course content appears to be statistical methods. For example, courses that studies included studies in research methods in psychology or economics, such as tests and measures or business cycles, or courses in methods of processing mass statistical data, such as tabulating methods or electronic data processing. Or, a second way to qualify is through a combination of education and experiences. Courses as listed in A above plus appropriate experience and additional education. The experience should have included a full range of professional statistical work, such as sampling, collecting, computing, and analyzing statistical data, and applying statistical techniques, such as a measurement of central tendency, dispersion, skewedness, sampling error, simple and multiple correlation, analysis of variance, and tests of significance. This position is listed as GS 7 through 12, with a salary range of $45,972 to $106,012 per year. Based on the experience required for this position, many people choose to do graduate work, where they will likely get another statistics class and a methods course. However, you can obtain most or all of them in your undergraduate program, 
but it will take some time to find the classes necessary to make this happen. For instance, you will likely need to take one or two stats courses in psychology, communications, or math departments. You should also look for classes in survey research or program evaluation and demography, or population analysis. Experience in networking involves meeting people who do research and working with them. Find the people who teach methods and statistics and search social science related departments for people doing research in areas that interest you most and talk to them about assisting with research projects. There may also be community work related to research, but research jobs are much more common in larger cities. As a result, ask your professors about local agencies who may need someone to do some kind of research. Perhaps a local agency wants to evaluate their program by surveying its clients. You can be part of any or all of the different facets of the project, preparing for data collection, data collection, data entry, and report writing. This way, you can go on a job interview and honestly say you have experience with the different aspects of the research process.